Okay, welcome back to Bramble Tie. Uh, sunny morning. It's lovely here. Uh, Brooks is a fantastic place. Um, January has been some of the best building months that I've had here. Um, you really do get some sunny days, not too hot. In answer to um, the, the staircase issue on the front of the house, I um, brought up quite a few questions about authenticity, about why we should keep the staircase. Um, we have a couple of answers. One is we have um, the sun comes around in the summer, uh, leaving the shade on the north facing front of the house. That's a good thing because the sun is very hot in the summer. But it also, um, when it rains, that damp sits against the staircase joined to the front house of the wall and that does create a damp issue. If you look back on the first episode you'll see the kind of damp that it did create and obviously that's been eradicated by taking them away. But that's not the only reason. We, uh, as a small security issue, you've got access directly to the first floor from those stairs and we'd have to block that off somehow, whether that was with iron gates, so we'd have to put something additional there uh, to prevent access. Not only prevent access to humans but prevent access to other animals. Um, we get all sorts of animals here, we've got deer coming through, we've got wild boar coming through on a regular basis and the idea is to put a ricento up uh, so that our, our ring fence around the whole property uh, so that we can be secure and free from um, wandering strangers, animals, you name it, um, uh, we pretty much get it. Um, one of the things I investigated uh, when we bought this property was how we were going to renovate it. Uh, I've been used to get, just getting on with it myself, but we do know in Italy that's just not possible. For smaller renovations, for smaller jobs, uh, yeah, there's no problem there. But with things like replacing roofs, building uh, walls back of houses and, and, and so forth and such like, um, we need permits. So I decided to start a building company. Um, I was told it was expensive by the architect and, uh, and it has been uh, quite a, an, an ordeal but we are there, we are called uh, Bramble Tie uh, di Construzioni, uh, it's just me, um, we don't employ anybody but what it does do, it gives us the licenses and the duok which is the um, certificate in, that we need in order to, um, to renovate the house. Before I get started I've got some measuring to do, um, obviously we're going to be um, wanting to get that stone measured up uh, properly so that we can get um, working on it and get the opening um, started in the, on the side of the house. I keep talking about it but we ne I need to get on with it. But before I do that, uh, if you could subscribe, it's, um, it's obviously going to be helpful to the channel, um, bringing you future programs. It supports us completely. Uh, ding the bell and then that means you can uh, subscribe and uh, get notifications of uh, the next episode that's going to come out because uh, otherwise we'll probably chase you and uh, make you watch it. Um, and tick the like box please uh, if you like what you see. We've had some great feedback, we've had some good questions and, uh, and that's been great for us. It's nice to answer, it's nice to talk about what I'm doing here. Uh, I tend to be here a lot on my own uh, which means that um, uh, you know, my Italian isn't fluent, so if anybody comes who only speaks Italian, uh, there's a lot of um and ah going on, and obviously I can talk to them in numbers ridiculously well, um, but that doesn't get a conversation going very well. A uh, glass of wine does, um, but you still don't have the, um, the full, I don't, I still don't have the full communication skills. Uh, they'll come, I know they will, um, but um, no, it's nice to have uh, another media by which to contact people by. I think it's important. Um, we've got um, a great deal of work to do on the house, as you can probably gather, um, but with the momentum of the, um, the series, I think it'll give me goals to work to and to finish um, as I want to, and then obviously we'll, we'll, you know, we'll finally be able to move in, which is going to be fantastic. We can't wait. But anyway, before I do that, I'm going to go and do some measuring. Thank you. You up to you. Hello there. Um, steady to go. We're on the first floor of the second floor. Well, I said in the last episode that we would look about uh, taking out the opening downstairs, and we've obviously got to get the, the lens or the architrave in there. Um, but before I do that, we need some stone. We haven't got any. Um, it's a new opening. Um, all the stone we had 
came out of the house is basically going back in and we just haven't got any more of this profile stone left. It's my other stone. Um, fortunately, a builder contacted me a couple of days ago, a good friend, and he said if you are looking for any stone by chance, um, the quarry um, may have some. He was there buying something else and he saw some stuff. He knows I'm working on the building. Um, so I think what it'll, it, it is a good idea to do is measure up and get up there as soon as you can. That, that's the local quarry that we can see from the property? Yeah, the stone is as rare as it It's very, very difficult. What I was going to do is open up downstairs, get the lintels in, the steel lintels, and then I knew over a period of time that we'd pick, pick up some stone down the road. Mm -hmm. But if we can get the stone before, um, that just makes an ideal job. We can draw it up properly, I can get the opening done properly, and then the whole job will be finished in one go. But I don't think it's going to be one program. It looks like it might be two okay. or three programs now. Are we now looking for stone, basically, something similar to what you've got in this doorway and all of the other openings, everything that we've done so far? Yeah, if we start from the base, this is the, uh, the footstone. Uh, this was here on the property. It's beautiful, it's stunning. It's one piece and I found it underground um, behind the barn. Um, dragged it over and it just happened to be this way. So, so this wasn't an existing uh, piece um, that came out of the building or maybe from something else? No, it doesn't match anything of the building but it just does make a great footstone as you can see. It sits out, it's proud of the wall and it just does the job perfectly and what it does is it allows you to set a stone just inside it and, be, and behind get a wooden frame and all nice and equally behind that how, as well. So how, heavy, how heavy is that kind of stone? This one uh, weighed at 200 kilos, I weighed this one and we winched it up, I actually winched this up on my own, um, which was fun. Um, yeah, I don't think I was here at that time, I was pleased perhaps I wasn't yeah. here. It went in perfectly okay with the right winch, um, good ten and a half chain winch, uh, it just went in very peacefully. Keystoned it in, cemented in and it stayed in the same position all the time. But if we can find something like this as well, that will be a double bonus. Um, it's rare. <laughs> I'm not looking, uh, you know, I'm not exp my expectations are not going to be high. Have you got any idea sort of the price that we might be looking at? I mean, no idea really. I've looked at some second-hand stone um, on eBay, um, on subito.com, which is an Italian used site, and everybody that's selling these things, they, 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 they seem to see some value in them. Yeah, they would be expensive. Well, there probably is value in them. And there probably is yeah. some value in them, but not the kind of value, that, you know, one of these, you're talking about a thousand euros uh, for this stone I found hanging around in the, in the garden. Um, when, when it's, you know, when the referral has come from somebody I know who is a builder, I hope he's looking out for the same things and the same prices that I'm looking out yeah. for, because that tends to be the way it is here. Because a lot of those, the local builders are restoring properties, aren't they? Yeah, um, there's not a lot of work going on in uh, Rapino or the wider area at the moment, especially on the older places. Um, a lot of the young Italians, they want new places. Um, they don't want the hassle of doing all the work on the, um, the old um, Abruzzese farmhouses. It's just simply too much for them. Um, it's been a lifelong ambition for us to do what we're doing and we're in a sense we're fulfilling a dream um, but we have got to get to the end of it but you know we we're under no uncertainty of the amount of work we've got in front of us. It was quite funny while you were talking there and I was listening to everything you were saying you could hear the church bells from the village uh, it's quite funny because those church bells are yeah. really quite significant. Yeah well it gets you up at seven o'clock yeah. in the morning um, yeah. that's for sure I, so the reason why we hear the church you can't see it this house sits on top of the village looking down over the village of Rapino and then down the valley and then in the distance is the Adriatic. Mm. Um, when in lockdown it was amazing. Um, I, I, I remember that mm. I was in the UK and you were here on your own and then you said to me, you've got to hear what I can hear. Yeah, through the whole valley every Sunday was uh, amazing grace. Uh, being played out throughout the whole valley um, on loudspeakers. Yeah, Ave Maria. Um, and because we're at the, well, we're not at the top of the hill, um, but we are a good way up, um, about 50 metres above the village. Of course, the sound resonates um, up here quite easily, and uh, the sound it was, it was much like being in, a, in an amphitheatre. It was sort of putting the hairs on the back of your, in, your neck on end. Every Sunday, it was quite a pleasure to sit outside with a glass of wine. And uh, I'll see some water as well. 
and, um, and listen to a mass. Mm. Just a glass of wine. I thought you went through, um, was it bottles maybe? Bottles of? Wine? Oh, water. Sorry. Sorry. Water. No, bottles of water. water. Glasses of wine. Glasses of wine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good quality multipaciano. Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Love it. Anyway, we really need to get on and get up to the quarry, see okay. if it's open. Uh, we, we don't have an appointment. We're just going to turn up and see, uh, see what we find. And see, and see who is there that we can pitch you, perhaps. Yeah. All right. All right. To go. So I'll make a cup of tea before we go, should we? Great. We're travelling along the road now that will lead us to the quarry. This road's actually at the top of uh, the little track that leads down into the village, Rufino. And actually last year, which was really interesting, the Giro d'Italia, the cycling race, came along this particular road. And that's actually equivalent to those of you who are sort of cyclists and follow it, very similar to the Tour de France. And it travels throughout Italy. And we were so lucky that it actually travelled um, throughout our region last year. One reason for that was also that um, some of the roads actually got mended um, and I think you know that made a big difference uh, for the area because obviously the cyclists um, crucially important for them that the road was in a good quality. Quarries are two or three miles above the village and uh, hopefully find it uh, we'll find it open when we get there. But it'll be an adventure because we've not been before. And uh, excuse my Italian when we get there. I'm going to do my best. Uh, managed to learn my numbers perfectly okay. A little funny story. Um, learned them on the train going into London every day uh, with about six people um, who sat near me, who got to know me. We didn't know each other's names, um, but I just re religiously learned out of the, um, the dictionary all the Italian numbers. They, they learn everything I learn. It's quite funny. <laughs> they even thanked me at the end of months of travelling together. Oh gosh, we're nearly getting closer to the entrance of the quarry. For the casa in Rapino, twenty centimetre, twenty centimetre, un metro. As you can imagine, our dog Button's going berserk in the back of a car because she's not joined Steve and there is a little dog now. He's funny. I like him. It's a He's her. Rod. It's, a her. it's a her. It's a her. It's a her. And we have a man Ooh, who queen, queen. you could see in the upper level. Take care of me, Steve. 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 Amy. You're <laughs> Emilio. 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 And Lynn. Uh, uh, io abitaziono a uh, Rapino, sì. uh, direction uh, Bocca de Valley, uh, un casa mm. destra uh, via Castanuove, sì. ah, ok, uh, vecchio casa, um, io ho hai um, uh, pietra, possiamo vedere sotto lì se c'è qualcosa, Qua guardare, eh, guardare. Oh, okay. oh, e grazie! <laughs> So, what is in a piccolo video? Piccolo video! No, niente, no, niente problema, grazie. Eh, scusa! Eh, chiami? Mattia, Mattia? Uh, nuovo o vecchio? Uh, Pietro. Vecchia, ah, buono. Fantastic. Because the, the casa, the casa is vecchia. Uh, si larghezza, si. Si. La larghezza si. si. Pola porta. Pola porta. Capito? E... So 20, uh, 15, 20 centimetri uh, square. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> ah! But Steve, it could be done in two pieces. Yeah, well, it's possible, yeah. Ah. Okay, okay. This is uh, Maiella Pietra. Tutti. Okay. Non so, va bene qui, tagliare qui. Sì, sì, capito, capito. Okay, buono, buono. Oh, fantastic. Buono. Oh, sì. 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 But, um... Let's 
Steve, what are uh, you? Pure Grande, no? Pure no. Grande, no. So this is a uh, Cento. The 10 centimeters. See? Yeah, the niente problemo, but piccolo problemo, but. Um, quanti costa? Mo vediamo, quanti quantitativo. Okay, okay, start. Non siamo cari. To uh, proprietor. So, uh, to, possible io offerta? Il, il muratore, chi è che sta ah, sistemando? Sì, sì. Sì, è sì, moratore, sì. 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 Ah. È solo moratore di parte casa. Oh, oh, no, ah. Lynn uh, Carioli. No, <laughs> sì, no sì. io ho il moratore. Ah, sì. Sì. Io ho um, tutti i regolari uh, con uh, Chieti. Con, con la mola? Sì, sì. Io. Yeah, sì. sì, io. Io ho machine. Machine. Yeah. Uh, Machita. Quantitativo. Ok, ok. Quanto uh, ne serve? This one? This one? This one, this one. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, six. Mm. Maybe six. Yeah, and top, you need top. A different. So, possible, dieci. Dieci. Dieci, please. We're now in the undergrowth, nice. I think. Bono. And Steve looks like he might have found something. I think I have to get round to see if I can get filming. Okay. What did you find, Steve? Okay. The pretzel, patuki. Oh my God. Is a uh, 120 euro metro quadro. So quello, metro quadro la o la? La. Ah. And this? Quel, di meno. Okay. okay. What's di meno? Di meno. Um, I should know that word. I shall look it up. Um. So what did you think about what we saw there, Steve? Well, the stone was great, the price was great. And he had two feet lengths, three feet lengths, a couple of four feet lengths. So we've got to go up to 2.3 meters and across 1.6 meters uh, in all. Okay, so and I mean, also the stone looks a little bit more grey to me than the actual stone that we've got on the house. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that, but we just want to match it into the other stone, so that's and, all. And obviously cutting that stone, you've got that machinery, which is what you've used before anyway. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, we've got a diamond cutting blade, uh, cut four inches deep, so that's quite good. It's a decent Makita cutter. It's just getting each piece drawn up, and obviously they interlock, or for me, they're going to interlock with steel rods. Uh, which will be chemical in. So, with a bit of um, with a bit of clever design and a bit of patience, we can set it all out on the ground, um, and we we can understand what it's going to look like before so it actually goes into the wall. So it's a little bit like designing your form of it, but not a former. Yeah, and the, that top lintel stone, the one on show, that will have a groove in the back of it, and that will um, that will seat properly into a piece of steel girder so what we call an H section steel girder uh, chemicaled in um, it'll become part of the girder so it's not going to move I was looking today on subito.com which is, um, is a second hand site yeah, a piece uh, you know a good lump of stone one of the big teeth stones um, 80 to 100 kilos, 600 euros. Now, is that probably somebody renovating a house or something or something that's sort of old and someone just wants to make some money out of it? Yeah, I, I guess they've got a few stones and they think they're, you know, I mean, whether anybody would pay that for for that kind, I wouldn't certainly not pay that money for the, for the for a piece of stone like that. It's just simply too much. Unfortunately, those teeth stones, um, we've got in excess of 100 of them stored. Um, so uh, so that's quite a good thing, all found underneath the ground. If you want purpose cut stone, it's going to be expensive and it's going to be too new. So we're going to be knocking it back anyway. The, the stuff we saw is very workable, but that's the downside is the sizing is, is not going to be perfect for us, but we can make it perfect. I mean, if you follow me through the program, you'll see um, well, how I think I'm going to do it and see if it works, uh, you know, leave your comments. 
and obviously the the first task that you're doing is get your plan organized and then you'll be tackling the hole um, to remove the stone yeah. but you've also we, we've got to have a visit to another place yeah I think um, tomorrow that'll be um, Ariely uh, we're going to a steel uh, steel mill I think they call it a steel mill and that's another place where we actually go directly to the factory we don't actually go uh, to sort of I don't know a shop to buy we're going directly to the people who produce the product yeah I mean that's a good thing having quite so many contacts here now good friends um, you really can just buy um, they're, they're quite happy for me to buy direct from the main suppliers it doesn't really they don't really care how much you buy either it's not on quantity they might price it on quantity but they're quite happy once they get once you've had that first introduction to them they're think, quite happy to, to I, th I think it's also the fact that you're building the relationship over a period of time um, sometimes you know we do have to go to places several times before we've made the decision that that is exactly what we need for the house yeah and be careful on the price uh, they might know you but they still want to get as much money from you as they can and, and the idea is to do a little bit of bartering but then you know that aspect of people wanting to get as much money as possible could be anywhere around the world yeah not quite I just that initial introduction is quite nice because um, automatically if you know somebody they know they treat you as a bit of a friend yeah. which means they all know you know well, kind of what price you want to pay. I think that came into the conversation today, strangely enough, with Amelia. And have I got his name on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Amelia. Um, when he said um, about, you know, well, it's about builders and everything, and oh, that pile of stones and things that I've got to one side is for a builder in Rapino. Now, he mentioned the man's name, which we didn't quite know, but then we mentioned um, another builder man that we know mm. in the village, and he went, oh, yes, that's his Fratello. Fratello being brother. So straight away, he registered that you knew people. Yeah. Yeah, and no, people who were builders. That's a small village. I mean, everybody knows each other around here. Well, um, 1,500 people in the village. Yeah, I mean, most of them will have gone to school with each other. There's not many people that don't know in the wider villages, everybody in Rapino as well. It, it, it seems to be like that. And we're just known as, you know, I'm just known as Steve, the English guy, so... And, um, and then some people don't call you Steve, they call you, what's it, Steel? Oh, Steel. Steel. My nickname is Steel. Steel. Um... It, it, does, that go with, does that go with the steel machinery or is it just how they say it? Well, somebody, somebody named me and, uh, and that is my name now. Yeah, because a lot of the um, men in the village have their own name but then they also have a nickname. Yeah, they don't know each other by their own names. Um, that's the funny thing about it. They know each other by their nicknames and they can even live in the same village and if you say their real name they won't know it because they only talk to each other with their nicknames it's very funny so you've got um you've got names like sakharov um quarelio uh, <laughs> and the real, tastoni tastoni yeah, and the real man's name called sakharov is called rocco yeah but everybody's called rocco marco mario after ah, so that well you can understand then yeah. so if there's 10 roccos why? There's only one second. That's exactly. Well, finally, we got the delivery of the stone uh, from the quarry. Uh, we got ten pieces in all. It looks fantastic. It's lovely and straight and square. And uh, I think the concerns about the colour won't be a problem. If you look at the back of one of the stones, it's, uh, it looks like the same colour as the stone we've got in the building. I just think it all needs uh, cleaning up. Uh, we paid, uh, what, 200 euros uh, for the whole lot and uh, I am one pleased person that we've, uh, we've managed to find it. Anyway, uh, that about wraps it up for this week. Um, if you like what you see, if you could subscribe and ding the bell. Um, we'll see you next week.